Hi, and welcome to Dr. V's Chemistry Webcast. In this webcast, we're going to discuss how to write names and formulas for binary covalent compounds. So, what do we want to accomplish in this webcast? Well, we want to write names for binary covalent compounds. We want to write formulas for binary covalent compounds. And along the way, we're going to do a bunch of practice problems because that's a really important thing to do. Now, in order to name binary molecular compounds correctly or binary covalent compounds correctly, we need to know that we have that. We're looking for compounds that are made from two nonmetal elements. And when two nonmetal elements form a compound, they form bonds between the atoms by sharing electrons between the atoms. And we call this a covalent bond. That's why we're calling them covalent compounds. These are found as molecules, so sometimes we'll talk about them as being molecular compounds. And we only use the word molecule when we're talking about bonds that are covalent, covalent compounds. Covalent molecules, molecules covalent, ionic compounds really aren't referred to as molecules. So a good example of this would be CCl4. Carbon's a nonmetal, chlorine's a nonmetal. We have one carbon for four chlorines. Great. How do we name this? Well, that's what we're here to learn. It turns out that naming binary covalent compounds is really simple and straightforward. We're going to use prefixes to indicate the number of each kind of atom present. And you are actually familiar with these prefixes, most of them certainly. Mono for one, di for two, tri for three, tetra for four, not other versions of four or other prefixes. We always use tetra in chemistry, penta for five, hexa for six, hepta for seven, Octa for eight, we all know that from octopus. Nona for nine, Deca for 10. And in an introductory chemistry course, we're really not going to go above 10. And then what we do is we look at the name of the second element and we change its ending to I'd. Okay, well, we can do that. Now there is one little quirk to this system. If the prefix mono would apply to the first element, we don't use it. So for example, when we're looking at CO, the name of the compound is carbon monoxide. There's one carbon, there's one oxygen, but we don't say monocarbon, carbon monoxide. And similarly, CO2 is carbon dioxide. And that's really the whole system right there. So let's do some naming. I'll give you some formulas, we'll write the name. Feel free to pause this, think about the name on your own, and then listen to my explanation. First example, CS2. The name of that would be carbon disulfide. The next one, NBr3. The name of that? Nitrogen tribromide. N2O5. Two nitrogens, five oxygens. That's going to be dinitrogen pentoxide. So I do want to point out sometimes when we have syllables that would bump up, bump up against each other, instead of saying pentaoxide, we just go to pentoxide. Now the system is so logical and so clear that it works really well to go from the name to the formula as well. So if the uh, name is disulfur trioxide, we know di means two and tri means three. So the formula is S2O3. Again, don't hesitate to pause this and try and work it out on your own and then check your answer against mine. Nitrogen dioxide. Now remember, we don't use the prefix mono when it's on the first atom. So there's one nitrogen and dioxide means there's two oxygens, so NO2. One more example, diiodine diiodine heptoxide. So diiodine, so two iodines, and then notice we've got that vowel business again. Instead of saying heptoxide, we wrote heptoxide. That's fine. Hept is telling us that there are seven oxygens. So the formula is I2O7. So as a summary, when we're naming binary compounds that are made of two nonmetals, we use prefixes to indicate the number of each type of atom. Now you have to be really careful because once students learn this system, they want to name all of the compounds like this. Even your ionic compounds that are made from a metal and a nonmetal or contain polyatomic ions. And that is not an okay system. No prefixes for those ionic compounds. So be really careful. Don't fall for that trap. If you found this helpful, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment. That would be great and keep learning chemistry every day.